Okay, today we're at a small site and we just have uh, about maybe 30 cots that we're doing. So we don't use a uh, steam cleaner, vacuum cleaner, any of that stuff. We just do this all by hand. Uh, basically what we have is the PPE, the protective um, equipment that we use, and some of the cleaning solutions that we use. In the center you'll see the Acel, which is a hospital grade cleaner. It's only available through certain vendors, so you can't get this at your local hardware store. But it is the sanitizer that we recommend. Okay, starting on the left, we have some J-Claws, which we use for wiping. We have uh, rubber gloves, the types that you would use for uh, washing dishes and things like that tend to be a little more durable than the little latex ones. Um, to the right of the cleaner, we have a face mask, which is essential because the fumes get in the air and it's very uncomfortable to breathe it. And then we have safety goggles, same thing with your eyes, keeps the uh, vapors out of your eyes. Uh, in the front, we have two yellow things. Those are covers that we're using for clothing. Um, you'll see in the demo later how they're used. If you don't have these because they're difficult to get or whatever, you can always use just garbage bags. Just cut a hole for the head and uh, holes for the side arms. Okay, now we'll look at the process itself. Okay, the next step is we want to prepare a surface. Uh, we're trying to get it as clean as possible. So in this case, we found that elevated surface like tables were easier on the back. So before we can use these tables, we need to wipe them down. And we're using uh, our cleaner. In this case, we put our cleaner in a spray bottle, and the spray bottle is what we're going to be using for the rest of the time when we're caught cleaning. The spray bottle we're putting in the acel, and then we're mixing it 50-50 with water. Okay, now that the surface has been prepared and cleaned, we're going to open up the cots and start getting them going. Okay, now we're going to uh, be getting the cots. Please notice that we're not putting anything on the, the table that was cleaned, although, when we start to do it, there's no way to avoid that, so that's okay. Uh, the cleaning process should prevent it from getting more contaminated. Okay, step one is to open up the cots. Um, if you have a large team, this is easy. You have some people dedicated to doing this. When you have small teams, we find it just as easy to do it yourself as you go along. Okay, with the cot laying with the legs up, we're finding the easiest thing for us to do in this case is to spray the metal. Uh, if you have a cell wipes, then those are the easier way to do it, but we don't have any. So in lieu of that, we're using the cell spray. And then we're wiping down all the metal parts so that we can uh, uh, disinfect that. Okay, once the metal has been all wiped down, uh, we're going to spray. Um, with the cot upside down, we're spraying the sides. Um, typically when people are getting in and out of their cots, they're grabbing the sides. And this is also a good time to inspect to see if there's any contamination. Some kids like to put their gum and things like that there, so you have to make sure that that's all uh, cleaned up. Okay, if you see any uh, dirt or anything that looks like it's something that's easily removable, you can just use a scrub brush, brush to get it off. However, if you find that there's contamination that you, you find suspect, then make sure that you put the cot aside and we do not continue to use it. We find a, a different way to clean it. Okay, once the bottom is done, now we're starting to uh, do the top. Um, in this case, we're using the spray bottle. If you're using a rug doctor, it has an attachment that you can use that has a spray on it. Um, make sure that when you're spraying this that the fabric actually changes color and that's when you know that it's saturated enough to do its job. Doesn't take long, but you will notice your forearms will feel this. Okay, once you finish this, you make sure that you do a visual inspection. Make sure that the cot uh, color has all changed, that it's uh, not overly saturated, but it's, it's uh, at least saturated enough to change color. If there are no dirt spots or any visible stains or anything like that, this is ready for drying. Okay, we take the cot and we move it over to a drying area. At 
This particular drying area has been set up. We put plastic on the floor to make sure that there's no contaminants that are transferred to the cot. And then we're gonna let this dry. Typically, it will, we'll leave it for six to eight hours to make sure it's thoroughly dry. We have to make sure before we pack it up that there is no moisture left in it at all because that's where mold issues begin. One thing that you'll notice when you finish cleaning all the cots is that there's a pile of bags left over. Uh, the bags have been contaminated. They've been laying in uh, on the floor and stuff. And when the cots were put in, they were contaminated when they were put in. So what we're recommending is that you do a cleaning uh, on, on the bags. Two solutions to this. One is you can turn it inside down and wipe them out. Uh, sorry, up, inside out and wipe them down. Uh, the outside doesn't really matter as much. Uh, or you can take them to a place, a laundromat or something like that, turn them inside out and just wash them commercially and then dry them. And both of those methods will, should get them uh, sterile enough that we can put the uh, dried cots in. And when the cot is finally finished, we have a little ceremony that we do in the last one. We name it after our good friend Luke, first the originator of the ceremony. It's called the Last Cot Ceremony. Yeah! yeah. When you finish and the last of the cots are done, uh, they're ready to be packed up and transported back to their uh, storage location. I'd like to thank the crew here for not only doing the demo, but also for washing all the cots that you see behind them. Thank you.